Hello and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. Today's podcast is number 1,527. The topic is Mindset and the title is Sliver Linings. No, that was not a typo. <laughs> I do mean the word sliver, not silver. I think we're, we've, most people may have heard, um, I gotta stop assuming because this podcast actually now reaches all over the world, which is amazing, weird <laughs> to think of, but amazing. Uh, so silver linings is referring, uh, don't even know the background of it, but basically it's a phrase that we would use to say like, you know, some bad things may have happened, but this is a good thing that can come from it, or this is a good thing, um, that came from it. So it's either it came from it. Or you can make it a good thing. So silver lining is, yeah, okay, there's bad stuff, but there's this one good thing here too. The joke that I have uh, with my wife, and I've joked with clients in the past, is the term sliver linings. And the reason why is it's a play off the word silver, and it means more so that whatever you're trying to find that could be a positive, given what happened, is so ridiculously small that we're trying to make a joke of it. So a silver lining is something that you're like, okay, yeah, that is a good thing. Sliver lining, you'd be like, that's ridiculous that you're trying to find anything good. That feels like it's almost a joke. So it's almost a joke about the fact that you're trying to figure out something positive. And the idea, like, for example, you get in a car wreck and you break your legs and then somebody's like, well, your pinky toe isn't broken. So at least that's fine. <laughs> and you're like, that's ridiculous. Why are you even pointing that out? So sliver lining is something that I have, I, I just recently put a term on it, like in the last couple of years, but it's something that's helped me a lot when I was younger and throughout my life. I just always was decent and I've had to build on it, but I was decent at trying to find, is there anything in this moment that I can use? <laughs> so when something wouldn't go my way and I would be disappointed and I'd be kind of sitting there. You know, you're now left with what you didn't want to happen or what you did want to happen didn't happen. And you're just sitting there and you're like, what do I do now? I got good at finding anything and saying, okay, well, I guess there's this. <laughs> and then I would try to build upon that. The reason why is it breeds positivity. If you can find anything, even if it's ridiculous, anything that's positive, it breeds hope and action. So I've had a lot of injuries over the years and it stemmed from a mixture of when I was younger, I, I didn't have access to a lot of information. I had magazines that I get once a month and you would look at pictures, but I never got to really see people kind of perform technique properly. I, there was all my you know buddies and friends that I'd lift weights with, but dear God, who knows what that looked like. <laughs> so there wasn't a lot of knowledge on proper technique for anything. I had years of under eating where I only ate about one meal a day. So I would be considered like anorexic and that was really unhealthy for my connective tissues, my joints, my muscles. So that really negatively impact kind of the quality of my uh, muscular and connective tissue health. And then I've had a sleeping disorder my whole life. So my recovery is trash. It's absolutely trash. I have the worst recovery out of any client I've ever trained. I've, I've trained over 20 years, over 3000 people, and it's absolutely garbage. Bummer. <laughs> so I have horrible recovery, but my mindset to drive myself is very high. And that led me to being very frustrated that my body wouldn't keep up and do things I wanted it to do. And I would often push beyond that and I would get an injury. So I remember when I was younger, I would want to get bigger arms and I would do bicep curls until I literally couldn't hold on to the bar. It's not that you would just give up and it would hurt so bad you'd have you'd let go by choice. I would be trying to curl and the bar would roll out of my fingers. And no matter what I could do, I couldn't hold on to that bar anymore. And I've done a lot of things like that where I'll be pushing, pushing, pushing. And then you hear like when you tear a muscle, it's almost like the sound of paper tearing. Like you can hear it inside your head. <laughs> it's just the sound of paper that goes... So I'd be lift, 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 and I'd hear, and I'd go, shit. <laughs> and I'd be like, oh, man, I just tore something. So, and it was just pushing my body beyond what the tissue could hold. My mind wanted to keep going, but my body couldn't. And that has been very frustrating over the years. But through those injuries, I've been able to help my clients avoid injury. 
and actually doing rehab and building people after injuries is one of the, one of the many like significant things that I get to do, which I'm very blessed with. Like my mom, for example. See, we started lifting when she was 47. She's competed in three bodybuilding shows, 10 powerlifting meets. She has elite totals in two weight classes, all the state records in both weight classes. And she's never had an injury that caused her to miss a workout in 16 years. I have multiple clients, dozens if hundreds, uh, that had detached muscles or torn muscles or spinal injuries or replaced hips, knees, shoulders. And we've all surpassed their pre-injury PRs. So they were able to come back and perform at whatever their thing was better than they were before they ever had the injury. That's insane. That's significant. And it's happened hundreds of times. So I've helped hundreds of people from their lowest moment to their highest moment. And one of the things that helped us do so was Sliver linings, <laughs> finding anything, anything that could be a positive and we built on it. So through my injuries, I've been able to help others. And that's a silver lining. That's a huge thing, not a sliver lining. That's big. But it was something that I had to come to terms with mentally. My injuries have in some ways held me back from what I wanted to do in my personal goals. But they've made me a much better trainer and that has allowed me to make more of a significant difference than my own personal accomplishments would have. Now, if you're mentally struggling, you can't seem to get motivated, you can't seem to find a way to get out of the depths. Find the sliver lining. Don't qualify it. Don't say, yeah, there's that, but that's ridiculous. Don't say that. Just find it. Find it, state it, build on it. You have a major injury that keeps you out of the gym? Read. Watch videos. Learn about nutrition. Nutrition, proper nutrition paired with training is absolutely necessary for you to become your best self. If you don't know anything about nutrition, it doesn't matter that you're not in the gym. What the hell were you going to do when you got in the gym anyhow? You're just going to tear up your body but not feed it right to where you're going to get the adaptations that you wanted from the training anyhow. So take the time to learn about nutrition. Learn about training techniques and different programs, things that you have never done before. Watch every video you can find. Read every book that you can find. There are YouTube channels that have well over a thousand videos, and I've watched every single one of them. When I was younger, not so much now because I don't have as much free time, <laughs> but when I was younger, if I was eating food, I was watching a nutrition video or a training video. If I was, you know, doing anything, that was what I was doing. If I was getting ready for the morning and I was brushing my teeth. I was listening to a lifting podcast. It's all I did. I'm very blessed that this is stuff that I find very interesting and exciting, even after doing it for 14, uh, well, no, gosh, 24 years, 24 years, every single day, I listen, read, or do something in regards to nutrition and training. And I still love it. It's still ridiculously exciting and fun. Very blessed. But I would do that. No matter what injuries I had, I would always try to find something that I could do. I would think to myself, I'm going to make my mind so bleepity bleeping smart, <laughs> so mentally strong that when my body is ready to go, I'm going to freaking crush my old self. Whatever I thought was good before, oh man, I just, you, you wait till you see what I can do. Oh, I just get so fired up. <laughs> it's fired up right now. But if you're going through nutrition struggles, you know, celiac disease, diverticulitis, gastroparesis, like these are maybe issues. I've actually been talking to people with these issues, which is why I included them. Uh, but that can be incredibly frustrating. It could be nutrition hell, trying to find the right foods, being sick all the time. But keep reading, keep learning, keep moving. Go for walks if you can. You know, maybe you feel like crap and you have no energy to, to work out, but can you do some posture exercises? You know, can you do some things that just help improve shoulder posture, hip health? Can you do a little bit of core bracing, some core exercises? Just can you find anything? No matter where you find yourself, find the positive. I've talked about a couple of my injuries in the past, but one that was pretty significant was a back injury, slip disc. Uh, it caused daily back pain for 14 months. 14 months my back hurt all day, every day. And for many months, I think it was like four or five, I couldn't even lift a 45-pound plate without horrible back pain. 
and I was training 10 to 12 hours of clients in person every day. So I was lifting 45 pound plates all damn day. My back was destroyed. I was in so much pain. At the end of the day, I'd train my last client either from 6 to 7 or 7 to 8 p.m. I'd walk into my office, lay down on my face, <laughs> and just pass out for hours. I'd sleep from 8 to noon, I mean 8 to midnight. I remember I'd wake up, kind of like drooling, just dead. <laughs> and I'd just look around and be like, oh gosh, okay. So I'd get back up, I'd finish a couple of clients' programs, you know, do whatever I got to do financial-wise, clean the gym, eat some food, lay back on the floor for an hour or two, get back up and do it all over again. But even after that, after 14 months of back pain, after not being able to pick up a 45-pound plate without horrible pain, and I've had other injuries where I couldn't even squat my own body weight to a bench, I couldn't even sit down. But I've squatted 600 pounds. I've deadlifted 700 pounds, even after all those injuries. I've broken my collarbone three times. I'd have surgery to put metal plates in it because my bones just didn't heal thick enough, so it kept breaking and breaking. I had to do rehab on my shoulder for a bunch of damaged tissues for months, but I've still benched 430 pounds. And I was a kid who grew up skinny fat. I was 165 pounds. You could grab fat rolls around my stomach. I couldn't squat and deadlift 315 pounds until after eight years of training. It took me eight years of lifting weights to be able to squat and deadlift 315. It took me six years to be able to bench 225 pounds. So I didn't start with anything. <laughs> I started with nothing. But I've still been able to accomplish things that are more than most people can do. So through all the injuries, through all the setbacks, the disappointments, through everything that didn't go as planned, I've still reached higher than normal strength, higher than normal aesthetics. I'm now 280 pounds, and you can kind of sort of see my abs. Pretty cool. I've had a, I have a successful business that I get to do full-time as my sole source of income, which is amazing and a huge blessing, and I'm, I'm loving it. One of the blessed people who get to do what they love and make money. I have amazing relationships, and I have good friends. I'd like to talk to my friends more often, <laughs> but, but they're there. I do have good friends. And I've helped hundreds of of clients do the same thing. No matter what you're struggling with, people have been where you are. And they've been successful in spite of it. They've come out of that successful. Whatever you're struggling with, find a positive. Find anything. Literally anything. Anything that you can do and do it. If it's reading a book while you're waiting for your body to heal, do it. You know, if it's if it's going for walks until you can find the right way to eat that you can support heavy resistance training again, do it. Anything that you can do, do it. Action breathes hope. And hope is what you need to push out of where you are. Find the sliver lining. <laughs> Find anything that you can do and do it. Commit to forward movement, forward thinking. You can do it. Turn this experience into your biggest blessing. It can be done. If you're struggling to get out of the depths, to try to find a way to progress, to find a way to move forward, to find a way to cope with what you're dealing with, reach out. I'm always here. I'm always happy to help. I appreciate people listening to the podcast, and I want you to know that the entire purpose of the podcast is to help you live your healthiest and happiest life. So if you need anything, if you want to tell me your story, if you want to ask for help, just shoot me an email at brutalironjim at gmail.com. Okay. I wish you the best of luck. There is a way to move forward. Look for it. Look for anything. And then do it. Make that your mission. Make that your action. You can do it. Okay. Well, if you like our podcast, please share it. The more people we share it with, the more people it can help. Let people know that we answer their questions for free. And... 
that we're here for anything they need. Thank you to the people who support the podcast financially. You can do so on our website at www.brewlearninggym.com. The podcast costs well over $1,000 a year for hosting costs. They have an hour to it every day, and we're going to keep it for free. Thank you to the donations to help support that. I really appreciate it. There's options for one-time donation, monthly donation, yearly donation. Anything you can give is greatly appreciated. Thank you. If you like the information we share in our podcast, you can find more from us on our social media channels on Instagram. I post on there every single day. And to YouTube, I'm starting to post a lot more often there as well. And if you have any questions, feedback, suggestions, anything you want to know, let us know at our email at brutalironjim at gmail.com. As always, I hope this was helpful, and thank you for listening.